So we are still using the Pythagorean theorem to find unknown sides of right triangles. But today we're going to leave our answers a little different. We are not going to just simply plug in a square root into the calculator, get a decimal and round it. We are going to leave our answers in simplified radical form. We're actually going to leave them in a more exact form. So what does that mean? So here I have a right triangle. Notice that it has legs of two and M and the hypotenuse is five. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to plug in, I know five is c because it's the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna say two squared plus m squared because that's what it used for the side length equals five squared. So I'm gonna do what I've been doing. Four plus m squared is 25. I'm gonna subtract four from both sides. I get m squared equals 21 and I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. And typically at this point, we would plug 21 into a calculator, we would find the square root and we would round it to some decimal place. We're not going to do that today. We're going to say that m is the square root of 21. Now we know that this is between four and five because four squared is 16 and five squared is 25. It's pretty close to four and a half, but this is more exact because we haven't rounded anything. So we're just gonna leave it as the square root of 21. Now, we do need to see if it will simplify. Is there a perfect square that goes into 21? There is not, so we're gonna leave it as the square root of 21. The next one has, should have a right angle box right there, but it has legs of five and five, and the hypotenuse is x in this problem. So this is going to be five squared plus five squared equals x squared. We know that five squared is 25, and 25 plus 25 is 50. At this point, we take the square root of both sides, and we're not going to plug it in the calculator. We know this is really close to seven, right? Because seven squared is 49, but we're gonna leave it as the square root of 50. But we need to ask ourselves, is 50 simplified? Is the square root of 50 simplified? Is there a perfect square that divides 50? And there is. So we know that the square root of 50 is the square root of 25. 25 is a perfect square that divides 50 times the square root of two. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of two is irrational. So our answer is x equals five root two. That is simplified radical form. That is the exact answer because we have not rounded anything, but it equals the same thing. In your calculator, if you do five, times the square root of two, you're gonna get the same thing as if you did the square root of 50. For this next part, let's look at what happens when we square square roots. Okay, so I have the square root of three squared. Now we know, and we're only gonna to have to show this one time, we know that something squared equals that times itself, right? So this is the square root of three times the square root of three which is the square root of nine, three times three is nine, and we know that the square root of nine is three. But look what happened. When I squared, when I squared a square root, I ended up with the radicand. I ended up with that number under the radical because we've talked about this, square roots and squaring are inverse operations. They undo one another. So when you square a square root, you get the radicand, you get the number under the radical. So the square root of seven squared would be seven, right? The square root, the squaring, they're inverse operations. They undo one another. You end up with a number under the radical. What is the square root of 11 squared? It is 11. Okay, so when you square a square root, you get the radicand. Well, what if I have something like this, two root five, and I'm squaring it? Well, we know that this is a product, right? This is two times the square root of five squared. 
and we know that this means 2 root 5 times 2 root 5. Well, I can put the number in front of the radicals together. I can put the radicals together. So 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, that's the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, so this is 4 times 5, which is 20. Now, what I want you to remember is when we did our exponent rules and we looked at the, um, a product raised to a power, and we said if we have a product raised to a power, we can raise each factor to the power. So 4 times the square root of 2 squared is 4 squared times the square root of 2 squared. You're going to square each factor. So 4 squared is 16, and the square root of 2 squared, when you square a square root, you end up with a radicand, that's 2, and 16 times 2 is 32. Okay, so you've got a couple of options for looking at it, but you do 7 root 10 squared and tell me what you get. I got 490, 490. 7 squared is 49. The square root of 10 squared is 10. And 49 times 10 is 490. So what does this look like with the Pythagorean theorem? Well, we're, here I have a right triangle with legs of 3 and x and a hypotenuse of the square root of 21. So if I use my Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I would have x squared plus 3 squared equals the square root of 21 squared. So 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 21 squared since those are inverse operations, I get 21. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides, and x squared equals 21 minus 9 is 12. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I get the square root of 12. I don't want a decimal today, but I do need to know if that simplifies. Is there a perfect square that divides 12? 4 divides 12, right? So the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and then the square root of 4 is 2, and I end up with 2 root 3. So x here is 2 times the square root of 3. That is simplified radical form. The next one, my legs are 9 and 9 root 3, and I need to find the hypotenuse, which is x. So I'm going to say 9 squared plus 9 root 3 squared equals x squared. Well, I know 9 squared is 81, and I'm going to come over here, 9 root 3 squared, I'm going to square the 9, and I'm going to square the root 3. So 9 squared is 81, the square root of 3 squared is 3, and 81 times 3 is 243. So this is going to be 81 plus 243. When I add those together, I get 324. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and 324 is a perfect square. The square root of 324 is 18. So if you get a whole number, that's fine. But on these problems, we don't want a decimal. We want simplified radical form. Here are two for you to try. In the first one, find the hypotenuse and leave your answer in simplified radical form. So I got x is 2 root 41. So you can see over here how I simplified the square root of 164. 4 goes into 164 41 times. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 41 is irrational, and I get 2 root 41. One more. Here is a right triangle, and you are solving for the leg, which is x. Solve for x and tell me what you get. For this problem, I got 4. You can see up here where I squared 4 root 3, 4 squared is 16, 
the square root of 3 squared is 3. 16 times 3 is 48. When I got down to the last step of the Pythagorean theorem, I got the square root of 16. 16 is a perfect square. The square root is 4. Okay, you're ready to practice.